we had we had J uh, Jerry Barnum on. I have Jerry Barnum on the other show that I used to have too. But but Jerry is a very unique person. Yeah, great. Yeah, and she's not afraid to talk about it either. How unique she is. But anyway, she's she, Jerry has claimed. I, I hate to say the word claim because I I'm a That's believer. Okay. It's a well, monkey song, isn't it? you don't have to say claim. Okay. I haven't seen any, I haven't seen any UFOs yet, but anyway, I'm a, believer, I'm a, I'm a believer. We've just been talking to Jerry. But, up there. but Well, we got a Fury fi fan van that we think we... Of course, <laughs> all we can fit in is our crew in the fan van. We won't be able to bring anybody else along. Because well, it's, it's full of frappuccino. Yeah, frappuccino. Yeah, that's true. We do have lots of frappuccino. We, do, we, we send Joe, Joe on a frappuccino run. Oh, yeah. Is he going for a frappuccino run? We, we need to go over there. Anyway, J Jerry from... Uh, no, just Jerry from all over. All over, yeah. Jerry Barnum, and uh, of course, you have seen UFOs many times. Not just right. once. We're talking many times here. Right. And uh, uh, what was the, what was the, okay. the first sighting? Okay. When had? I really first got interested in UFOs is when my oldest daughter, and I hate to say her age now, but when she was in high school in Great Falls, Montana, she was doing a report on UFOs, and I thought how silly, because I was like everybody else at that point. And the more I dug into it, I was working in an art studio there, Legowick Graphic Arts, it was called. And the girl Legowick? that I... Legowick. Okay, I'm sorry. A really good Polish name. And the girl that I was working with, her husband was in radio and TV in Great Falls. And she had told me, well, I have something on this, but I don't know how we can prove it. And her husband was taking pictures of a softball game and uh, the anaconda plant in Great Falls, they call it Great Falls because there were seven falls there. And the anaconda plant was right across the road from a softball field. And while he was shooting the softball game, everybody in the stadium noticed seven discs flying over the anaconda plant, which was hydroelectric. And they were zapping what they thought was refueling looked like. And I swear that a lot of people have said this since, that that's how they recharge their batteries. However, I am not that... Anaconda plants. <laughs> we should check into that. <laughs> that uh, well-versed in electronics and whatnot. Greg recharges but his batteries in similar ways. They, <laughs> they had this on tape, and Bill Murray went to put it on the air at the uh, local TV station. They ran it one time, and Melms from Air Force Base was there in seconds, practically. They confiscated the tape, and that was the last they saw of it. And uh, it was written off as a weather balloon. Wasn't it, it was written off as that never happened. Uh -huh. <laughs> never happened. It, would would that be Project Blue Book? That exactly was Project Blue Book. Uh -huh. And I have reference material that tells where Project Blue Book originates and how it originated. And ex, my ex-husband at the time was in the Air Force, twenty-year man. He did not believe in it until we actually saw them ourselves. And we had 80 acres up north. And um, it wasn't just once or twice. It was all the time. And believe it or not, Oscar, I did teach catechism to juniors and seniors up there. And I know that's funny to you because you look at me and you say a kook like that. No. Well, I, I taught catechism for about a year, so you, and we look at you if like I did it, like yeah. That, yeah okay. But uh, no, it was really interesting because this one night that I was leaving the house with my oldest daughter to go to catechism, she was in my senior class, and that was in 69. And uh, we were, we had a very long driveway, and we were at the end of the driveway, ready to turn onto the road, and it was a dirt road before we, oh, two or three miles to get to the tar road. Anyhow, we looked over a grove of pine trees, and there was this long cigar-shaped, look, we thought first was an airliner, and she said, is he crashing? And I said, no, and we were looking at it very strange, and it was hovering, and it was like, oh my gosh, you just sit there and gasp. And all of a sudden, it started raising straight up, jerking little at a time, and zap, it was gone. So what we did is instead of running back and telling my husband and my other two children to be careful there's UFOs out there, we took off like a bat out of you nowhere for town. And all of a sudden, when I got into town, I realized, you know, that wasn't very nice. I should have warned them at least. But you don't even think. You just... It's frightening the yeah, first time, yeah. but after that, it was not frightening. Did they do anything like 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 uh, make your your battery go dead for a while or lights go dim? No, that or? did not happen. But it has happened to other Only people. Only in the movies. Only in the no, movies. No, no, it has. Yeah. I believe that has happened, and I believe that they do that. 
we've had some funny experiences through the years up there. And uh, we were there three or four years, um, 80 acres, and there was a lot of things. But when we got into town and everybody was just gaga over this thing and all the kids were talking, there was 40 kids in the class because it was juniors and seniors. And so I said, okay, let's clear the air. Just everybody be quiet and just raise your hand if you've had a UFO sighting. And every one of those kids in that class raised their hand. Mm -hmm. There wasn't one in that area that hadn't seen a UFO. And after I started investigating and reading some books on it from the library and other places, back in the early late 30s and early 40s there was a Boy Scout camp up near Silver Lake and the uh, the leader of the scouts and all the scouts had uh, sighted UFOs up there but in reading about it even back I have pictures of it of Renaissance pictures painted way back way back of UFOs in the background of the painting of Mary and Jesus when Jesus was born and I mean, it hasn't just started, and there's no reason why we should believe that it did. They were here long before we were, I'm sure. It's the pyramid, the, the pyramid thing too. I mean, they always thought that there, was a well, in the picture. Easter Island thing. If you if you ever read about Easter Island, how they got all of those finished, uh, beautiful stones. They were um, long, narrow stones up to the top of a mountain so far up that it was impossible to carry them up. They weighed tons and tons and tons, like yeah, a building. Why would aliens want to decorate our, our, our beautiful planet? <laughs> well, maybe the rocks, they were thinking of taking over, do Oscar. Is that like a, I mean, it was when the Indians had it, I think, or before that even, before there were people there. It was a marking site or something, a landing site. You're saying that Martha Stewart is an alien? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Some people wonder. Some people wonder. Nuclear attack, now, Greg is looking very seriously here. He wants to ask a question. I'm Yes. No, 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 Jerry. Um, yes. A lot of people are, are non-believers when they come up to the UFOs. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the questions that you hear often about the UFOs, and um, how do you address them? Mostly, the people that do ask me questions want to believe. If they haven't seen them, they want to believe, and I tell them exactly what I saw, and I have no reason to lie because it doesn't do anything for my myself makes me look a little bit nutsy if it wasn't the true. The hasn't called you or anything there, right? No, I haven't <laughs> had any. Uh, in fact, I'm waiting for the government to call me and tell me to hush up. Well, Jerry, don't you, don't you really think, though, a lot of the sightings were uh, experimental aircraft that the U.S. Air Force were developing? I mean, you look at the, the stealth bomber and, and the, the, the design yeah. of the stealth bomber, and if we would have seen that airplane 40 years ago, we would have thought it was from outer space. Oh, yeah. I mean, there were, from outer there space. were sightings that were something that we had. Weather balloons, swamp gas, no. Swamp gas doesn't look like I've that. I've seen swamp gas. Well, <laughs> you, you, they told you've us had that one, right? Yeah. Yeah. You but, had, you yes, I agree. And there, there, there were kids. Like there was like 1968 Ann Arbor. Right? There was a time when the college kids thought it was cute to make UFO pictures out of um, frisbees or whatever. No, this this was over and, but, at uh, North Campus area in, right. in Ann Arbor, where there is actually a, a space research center at the U of M at, at, on North Campus, and there was a lot of supposed sightings. And then one night we actually saw some in, in that area. Of course, it was over the Huron River too, so you never knew what was coming out of the Huron River. Yes, true. <laughs> That's why we used to call it the Huron River. But did you did you think it was a UFO? Or did you? Oh yeah, I mean it really did. It really looked like a UFO to me. But I no, no, I the, have taken there, there were quite a few, to see them. The Ypsilanti Press oh, yeah. took pictures too, and and it, it was written off at that time as swamp gas. Uh huh. No, and, and, and everybody believed that because you got near the Huron River and you could smell the swamp gas, but uh, but you know, but they, they actually look metallic to me. Yeah. Right. Uh, well, that would be from the Huron River, probably, it could too. Very well be. <laughs> Some strange things in that river. Now, Jerry, uh, you, know, a, you know, I had a question for Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> he was so it. deep in thought, but doesn't he? I, I, I saw, saw this bolt of lightning come down and he forgot it. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm, so, I'm so deep in thought about this and I just forgot the question. You were snorting no, swamp gas in, last night, is what it was. But to answer your first question, I worked in sales engineering in Sheldon Company. And this one fellow there was a young guy at the time and he wasn't married. And my boss there, who was a designer and very, very reserved and laid back, we got to talking about it, and this kid heard us talking. And my boss had seen one up in Canada, uh, the results of one. They're just like here, they're good and bad. And I don't believe they're there to hurt us, but I believe that there, there are good and bad up there, the same as, as down here. Like Saddam is not up there, but he's down here and we have him. So, 
But he had told me this story, and I'll tell it sometime, about what he saw. And he didn't want it repeated because he was afraid people think he was nuts, and he had a very important job. Well, this kid said he wanted to see them because I, he had heard We're me talking about We're picking up aliens it. right now. We are. They're talking to us. <laughs> They're talking to us. I'm sorry. And you can pick them up, I understand, <laughs> from some of my readings. But anyhow, uh, so he wanted to come up to our 80 acres up north and see them. And I said, well, I can't guarantee you'll see them, but we see them often. And he came up there. And this is a funny part, and it gets deeper. And after dark, at a certain time, it seemed like we would go, we had a huge place, uh, 40 acres on one side of the road and 40 on the other. And if we would get way back, we had a big garage built. It was three stall practically with a, a room behind it. Anyhow, back past the garage, there was a huge indentation, like uh, maybe an acre of land that, that was like a bowl, shaped like a bowl. And there were things growing there, bushes and everything, but it was still sunken. And there was no gas underneath it. It was already tested. And uh, at night, if you tried to walk back there, and we would go back there during the day and pick berries. There's all kinds of wild blackberries, and there were pine trees back in the woods. There was woods all over. When we would get back there at night, you could only go so far, and it was like you're hitting an electrical barrier. And my hair would actually crackle. And it was very frightening, and I only did it once, and I would never go back there again after dark. Well, he went back. And when he went back, he was laughing all the way, and it sounded like a bull moose going through there. Oh, they got me, he would say. And all of a sudden, we heard nothing. And his girlfriend was there. He came up in a pickup truck, and she said, Now what? What is he doing? Well, he all of a sudden, we heard him tearing back. And he begged me, Please don't tell the rest of the guys. Don't say a word, please. I don't want him to know. And he took off. But he met the same thing that I did. And he only, con uh, the only thing that he said to me the next day at work was, I did feel it, and I know what you said was true, and I just don't even want to think about it. E.T. call home. Really? Jared, do you feel that the people on the earth, uh, that we have uh, beings from other planets? Yeah, like men in black. The men in black thing. Is he think it's actually happening right now? Um... If you seen the movie, it's like they say the aliens I are already on the planet. Even, I don't have to see the movie. I've seen my own movies. And, and you know, I really don't like getting too deep into, like, uh, X-Files and that. I have watched it a couple times, and it really brings a lot back. And my daughter, my oldest daughter, had an experience with one, and I thought, sure, that they were going to be taking her because she was walking in a trance ready to go outside. And I looked out, and there was one out there. And I caught her about 3 o'clock in the morning ready to disappear i thought but it scared me and so when we moved from there i thought that would be the end of it we, we saw them since then but i do do believe that there are people down here that i don't think i'm one of them i hope not anyhow <laughs> <laughs> that, that was oscar's next question yeah. that are have been contacted or have been put here and i this has been going on since bible times and before i'm sure it's not just started. And we're very naive to think that when God made Earth and put people on it, that was the only thing he did with this whole universe. I mean, there's galaxies and galaxies all over out there. And why would it just be Earth? I'm, cu I'm, I'm sorry. I'm curious as to, you say this goes back, or the sightings of UFOs. Why are the sightings always the same? Wouldn't you think, I mean, look at how we progressed to tech, you know, but the sightings are not the same. But the you know, cigar-like sh shape thing, it's always the same. It's always in a desolate area. It was big, it was yellow, you know, we saw it. They've been, it they've been over cities, they've been over... And the material I have, we don't really have the time to get into it. It would take hours and hours. But the material... Oh, sure, let's just go on. <laughs> the material that I have, they've been all over France, they've been over every country in Europe. And they've been in cities. They've yeah, been by the by. Uh, <laughs> they've been sighted by uh, people in the air force when they they've been sighted by the astronauts going up there. They've been sighted by everybody, and they're not the same. Uh, we saw one that was over. We rented a, a trailer when we first came back from uh, Great Falls and parked that behind my uh, in-laws' house. And I thought there was a police car outside, and this was way after dark. Everybody had retired. 
and I see this light flashing and flashing. I thought, what is going on? I got up and looked. And this is the first time my ex-husband agreed that that was something different. But he, I, I got up and looked, and it was like a police car with a light. Um, it was a round disc above the pine trees, round, with a, with a flashing light going around and around, and it was red and yellow and blue just flashing all around. Well, before we go on break, uh, Jerry, if there are people out there that have any questions, please call 759-0544 for Jerry. Or if there's any sightings, anybody else that has a sighting out there, 759-0544, 759-0544, give us a call. We like, if you want to, we like that diversity in aliens. So. Yeah. That's a diversity thing. The, the, one, the one question, though, before we, before we uh, play some music here and uh, take, a, take a break is, uh, the one question I've asked you before is, how come, now, have you seen, first of all, have you seen any of Ms. Keegan? Yes. Oh, you have? Okay. Yes. And uh, the, the other question is, how come you think it's, you've seen so many of them? And anybody, the how many haven't? times do you go out at night and look up at the sky? How many times does anybody go out and really stare at the sky? Well, every time I come home late, my wife punches me. I look at the sky quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I see stars. Maybe. I see stars, You yeah. don't see them unless you look for them. Okay. Yeah, well, I've, I've, got, I've, I've, I've go got the uh, Ann Arbor weather, weather forecast up. It's going to be great weather in Ann Arbor for the big game this afternoon. <laughs> it's uh, going to be partly sunny this afternoon, high around 40 in Ann Arbor, with a uh, northeast wind at 10 to 20 miles an hour. So, in the so big bowl with uh, 102,000 fans screaming. So good weather to see a UFO, too. I think so. Well, I got Greg sitting next to me. Uh, <laughs> 759-0544. I had a book, and I saw one out there. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Eagle 97 talking tunes. I got a question for Jerry. Okay, we got Jerry here, the UF, our UFO I, I expert. I love talking to Jerry. Yeah. Jerry. And Jerry loves to talk. All right. Two years ago. On there, UFOs especially. For yeah. you non-believers, about two years ago, there was a sighting run in the Saugatuck Highland area over Lake Michigan that uh, to this day no one knows what happened. What's the update on that, Jerry? Have you heard anything? Uh, no. And you know, the funny part of it is Oscar called me an expert. I am not an expert. All I know is what I really saw myself as expert and I have my own opinions and what I think of it and because Oscar did tell you that I had an after death ex after life experience death at whatever um, when my son was born and he's uh, he's nearly 42 years old I was gone the doctor said I watched him right down the time that I left and everything and so I went down the tunnel and they said I was gone 10 minutes it seemed like a year but after that and I came back it changed, and people will tell you this, anybody that has had that experience, it did change my whole life. I have no prejudices other than people that are evil, and there is a, I believe there is a God because I saw it, and I believe there is a hell. And I've heard things since then that the man that killed all those children in Scotland in that school, there was a man at the same time having a heart attack and was having one of these experiences and he met this man on his way to hell and he said he never wanted to ever go through that again and he changed his whole life because he felt like he was going to shape up and I'm not a religious fanatic but I do know after what you see and it's like and I'm I'm one in thousands and thousands and people